Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. I have another integral of the day. We have a definite integral from 1 to rad 3 of arctan of 1 over x dx. So if you want to try this on your own, pause the video. I picked it out because we're going over integration by parts right now in my Calculus 2 class. So I thought this would be a nice one to do. So we have to choose u and dv, right, when we're doing integration by parts. And almost any time you see an inverse trig function, that needs to be u. So arctan of 1 over x, I'm going to let be u, and then that means dv would just be dx. Now, why is that? Well, we don't know the antiderivatives of inverse trig functions. You didn't need to memorize them at any point in your calculus career. You did need to learn the derivatives of the inverse trig functions. And if you think about the way the biparts formula works, after you choose u and dv, you rewrite your integral as uv minus integral v du. And the beauty of when you let your inverse trig function be u is that you don't need to integrate it after that, right? Is u inside of the integral? No. du is, but that's fine because we learned all the derivatives of our inverse trig functions. And usually they work out nicely that you can do some kind of substitution um, and play around with this product. And this is usually a very straightforward integral to do. Most of the time it'll just take one step or so. Okay, back to the problem at hand. So u is going to be arctan of 1 over x. Do you remember the derivative Ooh. of tan inverse? If not, I'll remind you. So the derivative of tan inverse of x, same as arctan of x, is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So in this case, since the argument, the stuff inside the parentheses, is 1 over x, that's all going to get squared in the denominator. So you're going to have 1 over 1 plus 1 over x squared. And then, yes, I do need to use the chain rule. I need to multiply by the derivative of 1 over x. Well, 1 over x, I'll write it over here, that's x to the negative first power. So if I take the derivative, that's going to be, bring the exponent down in the front, negative 1 times x to the negative second. Okay, so I'm going to put that here. I'm going to actually write it, though, as negative 1 over x squared. And then here's my dx. Why did I do that? Because I want to clean up. And in the next step, if this x squared is in the denominator, I'm going to distribute it across to this denominator here. And it's going to clean up so nicely. So watch this. du is going to be negative 1 over, this is going to give me x squared plus this x squared cancels with this x squared, and I'll just have a 1 down there. So x squared plus 1 dx. How is that? It's good, right? And then if dv is dx, then v is just x. That was probably the most relaxing part of the problem so far. Okay, so now let's rewrite everything using our biparts formula. So how does the formula work? You take u times v, u times v, usually they're on diagonal from each other, but they got spread out. So x arctan of 1 over x, and that gets evaluated, don't forget, from 1 to rad 3, don't forget to write that, minus integral, and then we have here v times du, this product. Since there's already a minus sign, I'm going to switch this and make it plus. And then again, we go from 1 to rad 3, x over x squared plus 1 dx, like that. Okay, beautiful. Now look, we have this integral to deal with. And I would say most of the time it'll just take a u substitution. And this is clear to me, but let me explain why. I have x squared plus 1 in the denominator. And then the power of x in the numerator is 1 lower. So if I let u, or whatever variable we're going to use, probably t, right? We already used up u. We can't reuse it. If I let t be x squared plus 1, dt would be 2x dx, which is perfect because here's my x dx. Okay? If you're very comfortable and you can already do the whole thing in your head, that's really even better. Okay? Because right now what I'm going to do, 
when we do a substitution with a definite integral, you have to change the limits, right? I just don't want to because these already have the limits 1 to rad 3. I don't want to change these and then have everybody with different limits in the problem. So I'm just going to do something else. I'm just going to consider an indefinite integral, okay? And that's just to help me get the antiderivative, should you need to. And then we're just going to plop it back in. You'll see what I mean in a second. So we all agreed, right? t was going to be x squared plus 1. So then dt is 2x dx. All I have is x dx on the top. So 1 half dt is x dx. Okay, very good. So let's rewrite this integral now with t's. We'll have 1 half outside. Instead of x dx, that's dt over t. Do you know the antiderivative of 1 over t? Yes, ln, absolute value of t. I'll put plus c. And then what was t? t was, oops, <laughs> I wanted to highlight it. t was x squared plus 1. x squared plus 1 is never negative. So you know what? I don't even need the absolute value. I can just write 1 half ln, switch to parentheses, x squared plus 1 plus c. So this, now I have the antiderivative of this integral. And so I can put everything together and then evaluate this along with this term from 1 to rad 3. And then I didn't switch my limits, okay? So here we have now x, is that what it was? Yes, x arctan of 1 over x plus 1 half ln x squared plus 1. No plus c, this is a definite integral from 1 to rad 3, okay? Very good. So here we go. Upper limit is rad 3. So rad 3 times arctan of 1 over rad 3 is going to be pi over 6 plus 1 half ln rad 3 squared is 3 plus 1. This is 4. So that's the upper limit. Minus lower limit 1 times arctan of 1. That's pi over 4 plus 1 half ln 1 squared plus 1, that's 2. Okay. Can we clean up more? I think so. So this is rad 3 pi over 6 plus, okay, since I have ln of 4 and this is ln of 2, I kind of want to try to combine them. You see what I'm saying? So I can rewrite this. If I made the 1 half the exponent on 4, this would be 1 half ln. No, no, I moved the 1 half. What am I saying? This would be ln of 4 to the 1 half power, which is just ln of 2. Minus pi over 4 minus 1 half ln of 2. Oh, that's my alarm. One second. Just fun fact, I usually wake up before my alarm. Okay, um, so then here we go. So this is 1 ln of 2 minus 1 half ln of 2. So I'm left with positive 1 half ln of 2. Okay. And then plus rad 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 4. I mean, that's as cleaned up as it gets. I would just box it with pride and say, job well done. Now, I did mention you didn't have to do the substitution earlier if you're pretty astute. So let's just talk about why. If you had x dx over x squared plus 1 or something like that, you know, you can do most of it in your head. If you let t be x squared plus 1, and you can even write that down dt 2x dx, what's going to happen? All you're going to do is pick up a 1 half. So then hopefully you just kind of like ignore all of this. You go, I'm going to pick up a 1 half. This is what my variable would have been. So ln absolute value x squared plus 1 plus c. You can do it with other combinations too. Like say you had x squared dx over x cubed plus 7, right? You don't have to do the substitution. If that was your u, 
du is 3x squared dx, right? And then this would be 1 third du is x squared dx. So all that happens is you pick up a 1 third. So then I'd go, okay, no big deal, I got it. This is 1 third ln absolute value of the denominator. And you don't have to do the substitution. You don't even have to write this. Okay, I'm just showing why. So try practicing that. If you already picked it up and you're doing it on your own, fabulous, fabulous. It will make life easier, especially in problems where you need um, multiple integration steps. But this is the answer. Hope you enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also check out my full-length video lectures that are organized into playlists on my YouTube channel. I'm on Instagram and TikTok, Mac TV with Professor V. I have to get ready. Time to work out and then go to work. Bye, guys.